Welcome to the Appendix, where we read the primary sources of the past so that the present can be better understood. Today's primary source, the Townsend Revenue Act, June 29, 1767. On the reorganization of the ministry in July 1766, Champagne Charlie Townsend became Chancellor of the Exchequer. On the retirement of Chatham in October, Townsend assumed the leadership in the ministry. From this time, says Lecky, the English government of America is little more than a series of deplorable blunders. In May 1767, Townsend brought forward three acts dealing with American affairs. A bill to suspend the New York Assembly until it complied with the Mutiny Act, the establishment of a board of commissioners of the customs for the colonies, and a revenue act. It was expected that the revenue act would yield some 40,000 pounds, part of which was to be used for the salaries of royal governors and judges in America. Townsend died in September 1767, but the acts were enforced by his successors. On the surface, the revenue acts and the reorganizations of the custom office were highly successful. Prior to 1767, the American customs had brought in some 2,000 pounds annually at a cost of some 9,000 pounds. From 1768 to 1774, the American customs brought in an average of 30,000 pounds annually at a cost of 13,000 pounds. The new revenue measures excited the liveliest dissatisfaction in the American colonies. An Act for Granting Certain Duties in the British Colonies and Plantations in America for Allowing a Drawback of the Duties of Customs upon the Exportation from His Kingdom of Coffee and Coconuts of the Produce of the Said Colonies or Plantations for discontinuing the drawbacks payable on China, earthenware exported to America, and for more effectually preventing the clandestine running of goods in the said colonies and plantations. Whereas it is expected that a revenue should be raised in your majesty's dominions in America for making a more certain and adequate provision for defraying the charge of the administration of justice and the support of civil government in such provinces as it shall be found necessary, and towards further defraying the expenses of defending, protecting, and securing the said dominions. Be it enacted that from and after the 20th day of November, 1767, there shall be raised, levied, collected, and paid unto his majesty, his heirs, and successors for upon and respective goods here in after mentioned, which shall be imported from Great Britain into any colony or plantation in America, which now is or hereafter may be under the dominion of his majesty, his heirs, or successors, the several rates and duties following, that is to say, for every hundred weight of Wardupois of crown, plate, flint, and white glass, four shillings and eight pence. For every hundred weight of Wardupois of red lead, two shillings. For every hundred weight of Wardupois of green glass, one shilling and two pence. For every hundred weight of Wardupois of white lead, two shillings. For every hundred weight of Wardupois of painter's colors, two shillings, for every pound weight of Wardupois of tea, three pence. For every ream of paper, usually called or known by the name of Atlas Fine, twelve shillings. Four, and that all the monies that shall arise from the said duties, except the necessary charges of raising, collecting, levying, recovering, answering, paying, and accounting for the same, shall be applied in the first place in such manner as herein after mentioned, in making a more certain and adequate provision 
for the charge of the administration of justice and the support of civil government in such of the said colonies and plantations where it shall be found necessary, and that the residue of such duties shall be paid into the receipt of His Majesty's exchequer, and shall be entered separate and apart from all other monies paid or payable to His Majesty, and shall be there reserved to be from time to time disposed of by Parliament towards defraying the necessary expense of defending, protecting, and securing the British colonies and plantations in America. 5. And be it further enacted that His Majesty and His successors shall be and are hereby empowered from time to time by any warrant or warrants under his or their royal sign, manual or sign manuals, countersigned by the High Treasurer, or any three or more of the Commissioners of the Treasury, for the time being, to cause such monies to be applied out of the produce of the duties granted by this Act, as His Majesty or His successor shall think proper or necessary for defraying the charges of administration of justice and the support of the civil government within all or any of the said colonies or plantations. 10. And whereas by an act of Parliament made in the fourteenth year of the reign of King Charles II entitled an act for preventing frauds and several abuses in His Majesty's customs and several other acts now in force, it is lawful for any officer of His Majesty's customs authorized by writ of assistance under the seal of His Majesty's Court of Exchequer to take a constable, headborough, or other public officer inhabiting near unto the place and in the daytime to enter and go into any house, shop, cellar, warehouse, or room, or other placed in, and in case of resistance, to break open doors, chests, trunks, and other package there, to seize, and from thence to bring any kind of goods or merchandise whatsoever prohibited or uncustom, and to put and secure the same in His Majesty's storehouse next to the place where such seizure shall be made, and whereas by an act made in the seventh and eighth year of the reign of King William the third, entitled an act for preventing frauds and regulating abuses in the plantation trade, it is, amongst other things, enacted that the officers for collecting and managing His Majesty's revenue and inspecting the plantation trade in America shall have the same powers and authorities to enter houses or warehouses to search or seize goods prohibited to be imported or exported into or out of any of the said plantations or for which any duties are payable or ought to have been paid and that the like assistance shall be given to the said officers in the execution of their office as by the said recent act of the 14th year of King Charles II is provided for the officers of England, but no authority being expressly given by the said act made in the 7th and 8th year of the reign of King William III to any particular court to grant such writs of assistance for the officers of the customs in the said plantation. It is doubted whether such officers can legally enter houses and other places on land to search for and seize goods in manner directed by the said recent acts. To obviate which doubts for the future and in order to carry the intention of the said recited acts into effectual execution, be it enacted that from after the said 20th day of November 1767 such writs of assistance to authorize and empower the officers of His Majesty's Customs to enter and go into any house, warehouse, shop, cellar, or other place in the British colonies or plantations in America to search for and seize prohibited and uncustomed goods in the manner directed by the said recited acts shall and may be granted by the said superior or Supreme Court of Justice having jurisdiction within such colony or plantation, respectively. Thank you for joining us for our primary source today on The Appendix. Three, two, three, two, three.